Hello, and thank you so much once again for joining me on the Light Path Podcast. If this is your first time joining me and joining us in this community, then you are more than welcome. And you're in for a little fun one today because recently, I don't know about you, but I have been getting a little bit of the ick with some of the spiritual sayings or cliches or at the end of the day, just diatribe that comes out of people's mouths that you can tell so evidently they have no idea what they're talking about and they're drawing on these spiritual terms as a way to maybe make themselves sound like they do. And ultimately it just leaves the person hearing it a little bit disconnected, a little bit mystified, maybe even more confused. And that is definitely what I witnessed the other night and I guess what sparked this conversation that I wanted to have with you today and I really want to talk about just some of the stupid shit that in inverted commas spiritual people say I like to think that I pride myself on being really down to earth in the approach I take to the ethereal in that exploring what it means to be human through the lens of the soul, of the unseen, of the vibrational, in order to embrace all the opportunities, all the joys, all the pains, all the trials, all the triumphs of being human, because ultimately that's what we're here to do. One of the pillars of every business I own, but also a highly uh, valued value of mine is empowerment and everything I do I really hope that I'm not only empowering anyone who may interact or intersect with it but I'm also finding a sense of empowerment for myself and so today we can take what I'm going to say with a little bit of tongue-in-cheek and some of these Uh, stupid shit that spiritual people say sayings I've probably used myself and so I'm kind of laughing along poking fun with it but I kind of just want to call it out break it down maybe what it actually means or definitely what I'm thinking when I hear it so all of this started for me the other night when I was at an event now I'm not going to name any names because it's not, I mean, naming and shaming is far from what I'm into. Um, But for me, this was just a classic example of this and what perpetuated it. And even when I put it out to you guys on socials to say, you know, what are some of the stupid shit that you've heard spiritual people say and what gives you the ick, you guys came back to me with pretty much the same things I already had on my list. Um, So I was at this event And this event was a book launch. Now, the book that was being launched was, I guess, in the self-help domain. Um, This person who had written the book and was launching the book um, was really awesome. Uh, And so it was a, it was a, I'd never been to a book launch before, uh, but it was exactly what you would expect. It was a read a bit of the book and then throw to whoever was there for question time and so this event had the author but it was also hosted by someone who was very much um how do I say this without saying it I guess I've just got to say it pushing the fact that she was a spiritual practitioner um which I just thought that within itself was really interesting given that it wasn't her event like people weren't there to to necessarily see her they were there or the author and the book anyway and so as part of this question and answer section the author who was just so lovely and gracious was receiving these questions from the audience and doing her best to answer them and on a couple of occasions she also kind of threw to the host um, of the evening to contribute an answer and this is where it really got me because in the audience someone asked I thought a really vulnerable and um, 
relevant question. And this person in the audience asked, how do I feel more confidence? So how do I build that feeling of confidence within myself? Great question. Really, uh, I think it's a question that we all probably need to reflect on ourselves. And if we don't have the answers, we then seek them. So um, because confidence can open so many doors and, and ultimately just, just feed into you know, our sense of self and, and give us that little push maybe to do the things that we would otherwise hold ourselves back from or not feel great doing, you know, and the whole point of being human is to, to push our boundaries, but also to have fun doing it. So she asked this question and the, and the author of the book gave this really great down to earth, practical answer, loved it. And I was like, oh, I really hope that that answer inspired this woman who asked the question and empowered her. And then she threw it to, to the host of the evening. And the response was something along the lines of, you just have to remember that you are pure light. And that was it. And I thought, how absolutely bloody unhelpful is that answer? Like, what are you even talking about? It was giving Meghan Markle, like it was giving classic, I'll just like pluck this spiritual concept out of the air and expect you to eat it up or expect you to understand it. Um, and were her intentions that? Absolutely, probably not. I, I like, I 100% believe that she was sitting there with all the openness to help this woman. But I just thought, how bloody unhelpful is that answer? Like, what does that even mean? Now, have I said stuff like that? Yep. And so it really was a great opportunity for me to say, right, these spiritual sayings can sometimes just fall really flat and can actually you know, be, have the exact opposite effect than what we hope for them to have. So it led me on a little wild goose chase in my mind to think about the spiritual sayings um, that give me the ick. And so I want to kind of share them with you and not just put them out there and go, oh, that gives me the ick, but also to say, this sounds really stupid, but this is exactly what it means. Um, as far as I understand it, uh, in terms of that spiritual concept or context. All right, so let's let's start with the first one, like know that you are light, know that you have light within you. And I guess this also leads to another ick that I had. And I literally signed off an email with this last night and I kind of wanted to like the earth to swallow me up because it's never 100% sat well with me with that whole love and light. Now, what it's really saying to know your light is really just that remember that you are unique, you are special. Remember that you have what is required within you to do um, what it is that you would like to do. I think it's more of a statement of innate worthiness than it is anything else. So in that situation that I was in the other light, night, I would like to imagine that when this girl asked the question, how do I become more confident? And the spiritual response was, remember that you are light, is that whole point of if you really felt worthy of the things that you desired or worthy of your place at the table or worthy um, to say the thing that you wanted to say or do the thing that you wanted to do, whatever it was that you're not feeling confident with. If you were, if you were to remember or cultivate a sense of importance and worthiness just because you exist, then confidence wouldn't necessarily be the thing. You might feel nervous about how it's going to be received. You might feel nervous saying it for the first time because it's not something you've said or done before. Of course, but if you remember that, you know, you have just as much right as anybody else to desire what you desire and to do what you want to do, to be exactly how you want to be, then that light in inverted commas inside isn't anything other than remembering that essence of worthiness. And so when we can kind of say like, oh, remember your light, I imagine that's what she was trying to say 
And so if you've ever heard this saying, maybe that can just give you some type of context or anchor into remembering that you are light. Now, when we go into trans meditation, and I will use this a lot in like soul circle, or, or particularly when I personally just sit for myself. Um, and, you know, we might use it a lot in the moon membership, really using light as a portal to uncover things because that's what light does it illuminates it allows us to see and we can connect with the frequency of light through trans meditative practices so there it's kind of within context but i'm more talking about you know just that general um using the terms out in everyday life and where it may have come from and intended isn't necessarily where it lands and so the other thing is like when I hear love and light I feel like it's just something that spiritual people think they should say or it's a great sign off for everything and the intention is beautiful basically you're just saying I'm sending you love and illuminating in that to be bright within that to be warmed by the light to remember your worthiness um, that's how I see it, but because it's said so often, and as you know, we all know the people that kind of espouse these things and maybe not live it in their day to day lives. And you can't espouse these things 24 seven, by the way, no one expects someone to, to be really honest, but it just gives me the ick, like love and light, love and light. You basically are sending love and prayers, which is such a nice sentiment, but are you really, that's often what I think, like, but really are you? And and so it's a challenge. Like when I s said it in the email the other night, I said it because I really meant it. <laughs> like I wanted to send this person a lot of love and I wanted them to feel the light of, of what we intended in terms of what she was asking for on this email. Um, but it still did give me the ick because of so many people that give me the ick when they say it. Often I think not realizing exactly what they're saying, exactly what they're wishing for the other person. I think that's that whole egoic aspect of spirituality that can come in. Like if I say it, if I act it, then I can be it. All right, let me move on to another one. Okay, this is one that gets my goat all the time. And that is when people use the word universe to describe like, I'm asking the universe or I'm putting it out to the universe. Um, I'm like, you're not at a restaurant. <laughs> Like I just, I kind of want to giggle because it's like, okay, basically what you're saying is I'm aligning with the energy and the vibration of expectation that I shall receive it. That is what you're saying, but that's not what most people do. So most people I know have learned this through that, those pseudo spiritual manifestation practices Oh, manifestation. That is a whole nother one. Maybe I'll get to that. Oh my gosh, I could talk for hours on that. But this whole idea that you've got to ask the universe what you want or you're putting it out to the universe to me is so disempowering because I think what a lot of people have perhaps understood or misunderstood that to mean is that if I like put it out there, I ask, it's like someone is behind the curtain of the universe that doesn't exist. Someone's behind the curtain and they're preparing it for you and they're going to deliver it to you. Like I'm asking the universe for a better job opportunity. I'm putting it out to the universe that I'm ready for a relationship. Uh, shut up. No, what you're doing by saying that out loud, ultimately you're saying, okay, I want this. And I'm going to do all I can to align with the energy of that thing, whether it be love, whether it be abundance, whether it be flow, it's just an energy. But the idea that you could order something and then you expect the universe to deliver it to you is so ridiculous. This earth is not a restaurant. We can't just turn up and go, right, what do I feel like ordering? I'm looking at the smorgasbord of the whole universe and I'm seeing what's on offer. I could live there. I could drive that. I could have that career. I could have this much money. Maybe I could have that handbag, that kind of love. I could birth these children, whatever it is you want, right? You're looking at the smorgasbord and then someone comes along and teaches you to just put it out there. Just You've got to ask for what you want. Guys, this goes back to the whole manifestation thing. Manifestation isn't about getting more or asking for more. It's about being more. 
So if you're putting it out into the universe as an example that you are ready for a relationship, what you're really saying is, I am becoming or have already worked on becoming a person that is going to be a very high value partner to somebody. Whereas most people see it is I'm putting it out into the universe that I'm going to meet someone. So what are they like? What do I want? What's my list? Like people that make lists of like exactly what they want. It's good to know what you want, but that's just one aspect of it. The idea that you're asking for it or putting it out into the universe says, I am willing to become what is required. I was literally reading a book last night. It was like a Lucy score book. So it's like, you know, trash chick lit, which is great. I love her. I, love, I kind of love her books. Um, but it was basically like this character had like brought this house. Um, this guy had bought this house with the vision of this woman that he was really in love with. And, you know, he bought the house and he imagined, ha you know, marrying her and having children with her in this house. And I think that that's what manifestation practices teach us, like that we're, we've put it out into the universe. We've asked the universe and then we like make space for it. We set it up and it's like, okay, that's really great. What you're basically doing is aligning with the man that is ready to be the husband, to ready to be a really great provider. You understand your role in this agreement that you are wanting to align with. So don't think when you say like, I'm asking the universe for it, because basically then people could turn around to me and go, but I, the universe hasn't delivered. You're not at a restaurant. You didn't just order a chicken salad. And now you're sitting here waiting for it. That's not how it works. So don't fall for those manifestation practices. Uh, another one, I've actually spoken about this on socials, is that everything happens for a reason. No, 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 no. Did, you know, your friend's cancer happen for a reason? Did a tragic event happen for a reason? No. Can we find meaning or draw meaning out of events yes absolutely and sometimes that's a really beautiful coping mechanism it's a way that we can maybe make something that's really terrible at least give it some type of purpose or meaning within our lives but I think we have to sit with this uncomfortable fact that sometimes things just happen and they're really bad and they're shit and it doesn't happen for a reason. But we do have the choice if we choose it. And that's only an if, we don't have to. If it helps for us to choose it, to make some type of meaning or positivity or purpose out of it. We also have the option for the things that happen to us or around us to actually have the opposite effect and limit us, maybe shut us down, maybe keep us in fear. But most things don't happen for a reason. They just happen. And our job is actually to decide what we're going to make from it. And sometimes with hindsight, we can see that. Like, you know, you might get dumped by the man of your dreams and then the very next day meet someone 10 times better. And then you ask, oh, now I understand why that happened. That terrible breakup happened for me so I could meet this person. It's like, well, not really. That's maybe the connection that you're making but often things just happen and then we become available to other things and other ways of being and we learn. So I just want you to be careful with that one, especially when you use it to comfort people. When people are going through, oh, I, I see people use this often as spiritual bypassing. So people are going through something and they're like, well, I, you know, but everything happens for a reason. And then they, they're out there searching for the reason it happened and really the reason it happened 
in their mind would be that they're rewarded in some way for the pain or suffering that they're going through. And I'm like, no, we just live in a universe where things happen and and we course correct and we choose other paths and, you know, it just happens that way. Again, there is no dude in the sky with some manuscript and is conducting this whole orchestra that is life. No, no, no. We do that with the choices that we make. Um, this is maybe not a spiritual concept, this next one. But I hear it a lot and it gives me the ick, so I'm just going to chuck it in on this one. And that is, if they wanted to, they would. And so this is definitely like in a, in a dating world, people say that. Like, if someone really wanted to, they would. Or it definitely in relationships. And can, I, can we just call bullshit on that? Because how many times have you been in a situation where you've really wanted to say something? You've really wanted to do something. But for whatever reason, and there could be a million of them, you just couldn't bring yourself to do it. How many times have you had a crush on somebody in your life and you didn't tell them because it's really overwhelming and it's really nerve wracking. You wanted to, you wanted to be with them. You wanted to call them. You might've wanted to text them, but you didn't because maybe you wanted it to happen a different way, or maybe you just weren't ready or you weren't confident enough, all those things. So please, can we stop saying that? If they wanted to, they would. It's not that simple. If it was that simple, my gosh, could you imagine if it was that simple? It's not that simple. People are layered. People are complex. Every single person is walking around with their own veil, their own perception, their own pain, their own fears, their own trauma. And we know that is what drives most of the decisions that we make. It's the moments of courage. It's the moments of complete alignment with our worthiness or our desire to just kind of override all those fears and pains and traumas to put ourselves out there doing something that we want to do. And that is rare. So can we just celebrate the fact that when people do that and use that as inspiration to do that ourselves, as opposed to putting people down for not behaving in the way that we would want them to behave or we see as their capacity for behaving they wanted to, they would. I just think that's so judgy. So just like sit with that one. I'd see how you go with that one. All right. My last one is that gives me the ick is the word soulmate or relationship container. And this is um, a couple of these I saw on Instagram when I put it out there to you guys. But this is one of them, like the relationship container. So I've linked it in with soulmate. Basically, when people talk about a container of a relationship, why don't they just say what it is? It's just relationship agreements and boundaries like the safe container of our relationship. All they're saying is in this relationship, we have agreements. We act certain ways. We don't do certain things. Like it's just boundaries that we're all respecting. And that makes it feel safe because we know where the perimeters lie. Like as a, you know, early childhood specialist, that's definitely what happens with kids. The, the biggest risk-taking kids are the ones that have the strongest boundaries because they know they're going to be pulled back or they know where the line is. So they have all this space to explore within the container. Um, <laughs> that word's so funny. Um, of what's going on. Basically, it's just the safe space that both of you have agreed to because you've been able to communicate boundaries. That's all they're talking about. But it sounds like so out there. Why don't we just talk about it? We've got rules and boundaries within our relationship. Like, why is that so hard to say? And that whole soulmate thing, like, is he my soulmate? I'm searching for my soulmate. Oh my gosh, guys, I could do a whole episode just on this, but I'm just going to put this really bluntly and really quickly for you now. And if you want to hear more about it, let me know, because I am more than happy to go into this. There is not one person for you out there. You are not on this beautiful, magical, amazing earth right now at this point in time with the sole purpose of finding your soulmate or attracting your soulmate. You are here for way more than that. As far as I define it, a soulmate 
is a friend to your soul. Your soul being that most authentic, eternal part of you. The part of you that if we stripped away the egoic side, so the fears, the competition, the misperceptions, the conditioning, if we stripped away all that, the soul that sits there is the core of who you are. The who you are when you're not held back by all the things that we talked about. This is why we have a spiritual practice. This is why you're on the moon membership. This is why you're listening to this podcast because you're at least a little intrigued about getting to know your ego and working with it in order to serve your soul so that you can feel more liberated and empowered to be led by it and to know it. We come to this earth just like that and then we get all these layers put upon us and we put them upon ourselves too because we experience stuff so we become protective we become hurt we become fearful we become conditioned by outside expectations and circumstances and some of this is really great and some of this you know it ends up being really unhelpful so that's why we have a spiritual practice because we're just getting back to the source the soul the who we are without all the other stuff all the layers and so a soulmate is a friend to the soul. It's someone that you connect with that just really sees and treats you as your greatest potential. It's someone vibrationally that when you merge, there's a sense of connection and safety. You have many, many, many friends of your soul on this planet in the form of relatives, colleagues, platonic friends, children, lovers. So can we stop seeking our soulmates? First of all, become your own soulmate. That's the first step. Become your own soulmate and then see how it is that you can open yourself up to seeing someone's soul as opposed to somebody's ego. You shouldn't ignore their egoic choices um, and behavior, especially if it's harmful to you. But can we give up the idea that there's just one person out there for you and you're trying to find your missing piece or your other half? Because another big role of a soulmate is to reflect the potentiality of your soul back to you which can be very unsexy. Someone that holds you accountable to your potential as opposed to, you know, your lower vibe self. Like that's not very romantic all the time either, which is why our soulmates are often really challenging relationships because they hold us often to a higher standard than we hold ourselves, which is great because we're constantly then able to expand into that and we're given kind of direction or inspiration to do so but if we can just like imagine how liberated you would feel if it was like do you know what my romantic partner is just someone I choose to walk life with and isn't that so amazing that I'm brave enough to make that choice and that I could have chosen many other people but I choose this person and it, it's within that choice that I go through the good times the hard times the really challenging times and sometimes make really difficult decisions to sever that contract or container, um, but to sever that agreement that we have in terms of what our relationship looks like. All right, I would love to hear any other ones that you have, like spiritual shit people say that gives you the ick. Send it to me. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. I would love to hear yours. Uh, don't take anything I've said overly seriously or too seriously. It's just a more social commentary. Um, but hopefully, you know, maybe allows you to see things a little bit differently. And I apologize in advance if I say stupid spiritual shit that 
is sounding really odd to you. I'm sure I do all the time. Um, but I hope that it's always went back to my intention. And that is, you know, really empowering. And oh my God, I call, I'm called it the Light Path Collective. I've just realized that, like, know your light. Um, the Light Path Collective. Okay, let me just justify that. Now I feel like I have to justify it. The reason why it's being like illuminating using that concept of light to see more clearly to make it a little like literally physically, mentally, emotionally, a little bit lighter, to use light to, to transform, to become more, to become more open. Imagine, you know, think about nighttime, how everything just seems so small, a little bit more sinister, but then in the middle of the day, everything's so much more open and vibey. Oh my gosh, I just realized my whole business use that term <laughs> right at the end there all right i am going to love and leave you maybe with a whole lot of light uh, but thanks again for joining in as always love to hear your comments and until next time try not to say stupid spiritual shit just kidding but maybe don't take it so seriously when it gives you the ick next time